Check, check. Check, check. All right, hello, people. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Let me just quickly do my the good old link spam in here so people know that I'm live. Gonna keep on with these more frequent, more regular streams. Gave myself yesterday off. And we got something a bit, uh, a bit different than usual today. A thing I've had kind of, uh, like many of my projects, has just been sitting on the sidelines for a while. Okay, looks like those links are good. And that one's good. And my Instagram story, did it post? Looks like it did. Okay. Let me just get into position here and then I'll lower the holding screen. Hello, it's me. The one problem with these daytime and morning streams is I'm less likely to be drinking conch, which means the burp counter might not be utilized as much, but uh, I think tomorrow, tomorrow we'll do an evening stream. We'll do that back-to-back -back thing I was mentioning before where you do um, evening stream and then the next morning you just do a morning stream. I have this uh, Spire's avatar here that uh, I was do I glued the basing on my Spire the rest of my Spire's army last night because I just needed a low key night without streaming and there's just a little piece that needs to be glued so that's the thing I'm just getting out of the way before I get to the actual terrain stream. I think these avatar models, by, by the way, are some of. I think the avatar regiment is like my favorite Spire's regiment at this point. I think they look amazing. Just gotta re-glue this lad's loincloth. This is the standard bear, obviously. You just gotta hold that for a minute. Yeah, between those IKEA diffed rocks that I won't shut up about and the terrain making I'll do today, I'll, it's just a, gonna be a big bunch of free promotion for Ikea, perhaps. I think I need to add a bit of super glue to the bottom of this staff, because that's going to bug me, and I might as well do it while I'm here. Hello, a Winnipeg Nightly Arts. Oh, you're familiar with that groin flap, I see. I 
Okay, let's actually pull out that IKEA terrain here. So that we've got, uh, that's probably camera needs to be a little higher. This is, we've got one big plant here. I'm probably, there'll probably be some leftovers of this one. So we also got some of these smaller plants. Yeah, the Avatar weren't, like, the easiest to assemble, but they weren't the, the worst Conquest unit to assemble. I found the Bound clones more frustrating, but that's probably mostly because of their mold lines. Uh, so these are some, there's some, like, foam sheets from the craft store that I had from a long time ago as templates for War Machine and Hordes games. And so I kind of cut them up and puzzle pieced them together to make them a bit bigger and added a couple layers of craft paint to them. So these are going to be like the templates for the forest. And then the last component we got here. These, all out. these are just uh, spare wargaming bases I had that I painted with the same mix of craft paints. I think we're gonna add just a bit more paint to start off the stream. But uh, I, these ones are just some bases glued together so I can be, so they can be a bit bigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just clip these out and stick them onto these. And these can be like the movable plants that sit on the forest templates. And if you're, if you're all, at all familiar with Wargaming terrain, it's probably something, you've probably seen something similar before. And before we cut up any of these plastic paints, I want to just dab a bit more paint onto these because I added a bit too much green and I just want a bit more brown back back in there. So we're going to sponge some of that on. Give myself space here. This is a mix of craft paints I, I have and it's I just call it the shit mix. And we're, I think we're going to mix it with a bit of Mod Podge matte. Uh, yeah. Got a sponge here. Got a glove. I don't need this whole sponge. I do need some tweezers. Plastic tweezers, that is. Yeah, there are a lot of avatar parts. Also, I guess that with the standard bear here, we got the classic, like, oh, they have to include the resin shoulder bit because the sprue is, like, too extra a missing one. Uh, Richard Kovacs, the gunpla I'm doing next. There's, I have, technically, I got two gunpla projects in the work in progress stage right now. One is the Hama Hama which uh, I built a little bit on stream back in December. And then the other one is I'm going to do more kit bashing to the the Le Iron-Blooded Orphans Leftovers kit bash I did for a video. Let's see, that was back in um, May, I think. And yeah, and then I've got, there's a couple more Gunpla that are like, I mean, there's always a bunch of projects that are potential things in the works. But those two are the main ones that, like, you're likely to see next. And, uh, I don't have space for the high-grade Nightingale. It's too big. It's too big of a boy. Okay, let's... Get our palette here. Need to make sure I have a space to lay these down. Or they can dry. I don't know if I'll need that glove, actually, if I have these tweezers. I guess I'll put it on anyways. This is just going to be a quick and dirty process here. Just a bit of Mod Podge. A bit of the brown. It's just 
to mix it with the you don't want to overload the sponge because the reason we're still dabbing this is because I sponged on too much green so we don't want to also do that again with the brown okay well I'll just go for it The high grade nightingale is pretty big, <laughs> in my opinion. I think I think it's pretty big. I have the artifact nightingale. That's the appropriate size nightingale for me. I don't have a super recent video out showing off the current shelf setup, but it's pretty crowded right now. Between everything, Blue Parappa and I have. Yeah, this is kind of the tasteful amount of brown I was hoping for. This seems like you and I have a different understanding of what defines a big model then. I've been working on a lot of miniatures lately, so makes the Gunpla scale models seem all that much bigger in my personal context. I also don't like, uh, I enjoyed working on the Artifact Nightingale, but the Nightingale isn't like one of my favorite designs or anything. It's pretty fun, the big lobster. I don't think I like it enough to want to customize it again in a different form. Not in the immediate future anyways. The Hamahama is decently big actually. Its footprint is a lot smaller than whatchamacallit, Nightingale. Okay, I think this piece is good. On to the next. I don't want to rip off another piece of foam so I can just make it go a little faster. Hopefully it doesn't look too uniform. Should have put a bit more paint on the palette, it seems. The VO from, was it Double Zeta or Zeta? That's got some fun front skirt arms, too. Blue Parappa has the high grade of that one. I think she said it, wa it. She wants it to be the leader of her Gamma Wolves crew. Yeah, that's a better sponging to sponging pattern. That's more what I was looking for. When I put the layers of green paint in here, I mixed a bit of uh, a bit of really fine 
uh, grass flocking into it to give it a bit of a texture, but I think I, it just, I just made it flakier by doing that. But uh, yeah, maybe the brown I'm doing here will help mix in those flakes a bit. That's good enough for this piece. The high grade Rosen Zulu is uh, pretty sweet. I was supposed to get one of those actually in the fall, but uh, <clears throat> the person who was going to give it to me was not able to source them. Because apparently it's a hard one to get your hands on. But you know me, I like it when the mechs have high heels. I mostly so I mostly like the Rose and Zulu for the for the legs. Does the Rosen Zulu, Zulu fall over a lot? It seems like it'd be a, a fairly top-heavy kit. The Rosen Zulu is another one of those kits that just illustrates how much more stylish the Xeon ones are over the Federation ones. Okay, one of these templates left and then we do the bases. Should be just enough paint left for this. I'm sorry, Devin. I'm sorry, Mr. Okander Art. I brushed my teeth right before the stream, so I was saying I said I was saying at the beginning of the stream actually the planning on doing an evening one tomorrow, so I'll gotta make sure to burp extra hard. It's like the downside of the daytime slash morning streams is like usually drinking coffee instead of conch. Now it looks like some of the <clears throat> some of the flocking that was in the green paint is transferred to my to my dry palette. Hopefully that doesn't uh, make its way stealthily make its way into some paints when I'm painting something else later. All right, well let's call that one done, and we'll move on to the bases. <clears throat> Favorite Gundam, 
Hmm. That's hard to nail it down to once. I think a lot of the time I'm torn between just the, all the Zaku body types in general and the good old Barbatos. When I say like all the Zaku types, I'm including the Goof in there. The Gushin and the Gog and the Zok are all pretty great. It's like almost all my favorites are Zeon suits, except for... Well, Barbatos isn't Universal Sentry, so it doesn't really count, or it doesn't really work that way. But it's like a protagonist suit. Usually I lean more towards the antagonist ones. Alright, let's start dabbing away at these bases. It's kind of, I like to get the edges, but it's kind of hard. I suppose maybe if I do the edges first. I say it's kind of hard because I'm not using like, there's a bunch of these, so I'm not bothering with painting handles. Excellent. Let's just keep this assembly line going now. Oh, well, if your main favorite Gundam is in, like, a mobile suit that is actually called a Gundam, then I don't know if I have a favorite. Well, I guess it would be Barbatos, then would be the answer. But if I had to pick between a Barbatos and a Zaku, I'd pick the Zaku. And I guess the Zaku equivalent in Iron-Blooded Orphans is the Greys. And I'm, I do like the Greys a lot. Maybe I'd even pick the Greys over Barbatos. If you're going to be pedantic like that. I don't know how pedantic that actually is. I guess my I assumed in your first question you were asking Gunpla, not Gundam. Barbatos, hmm, let's go with lupus. Barbatos lupus. And yeah, these glued together bases look very janky, but uh, it'll all make sense when there's actual foliage glued to them, trust me. Hey, Devin, if you're still watching, I've, I'm officially done Baldur's Gate Act 1 now, and I played, like, the first, like, upper, like I played, like, two encounters in Act 2, and then I, then I uninstalled so I would get work done, but there's my Baldur's Gate uh, update. My new favorite character is Elminster, the wizard Of course I like big cannons. Who doesn't? Speaking of big cannons. Made a... Made a theoretical army list for Warhammer the Old World just to see how many points my collection was. For my Empire army. It looks like I could make a 2,000 point army. If I wanted to, I don't think I'm going to pl actually play the game, though. Unless someone directly is like, Liam, I have a square-based army. I would like to play game with you on this date. You know, pr provided I've got enough lead time to get ready and the means and time. That's... I'd at least be willing to... I would need a lot of time, though, to get the proper, like, base adapters ready. 
Gotta ask a friend who has a 3D printer to help me out, perhaps. Or I could... See if I guess, could get something sorted with the old CNC machine that I don't know how to use yet. It's not mine, it's for it's a family member's CNC machine I'm helping them out with, learning as I go. Ah, uh, Massacre Deep Striker, that one's definitely don't have shelf space for that one. Uh, my backlog's big enough and I'm broke enough. I can't buy any more gun plot anyways. Or minis. I'm in that delusional stage at the beginning of the year that every like modeler and miniature painter goes through where they're like, I'm gonna finish my backlog in this year. <laughs> Here's my life hack to finishing your backlog. Find uh, reasons to give away some of it. <laughs> like I got... Got a P Bandai kit that I was given that I would feel kind of bad painting because, like, it's the P Bandai part of it, it's only a recolor. So, I think I might donate that one to a sil the silent auction at Odafest this year. And then, yeah, I was also, I also got another RX 78 kit, which I have a couple of those already. And so that that's a good one where it's like when you have someone who's thinking about getting into the hobby or you think they might like it, you can give them like a high grade. Or like, here, try this out. You only need clippers. Here's the little mech you can build. Now when it comes to gluing or attaching the actual foliage to these bases, I'm thinking... Well, some of the, as you can see, some of these bases have slots in them. So those are a bit easy to just glue the plants in. But for the other ones, I think I might need to get... Get uh, the pin vise out to just drill holes for the stems to go into. I think we'll need something like that. I think just straight up gluing them to the bases probably won't be secure enough. I think before we do that we need to divvy up the plants and like figure out which ones look good next to each other and plan out which ones are going to go on which bases. Okay, only one more base to dab after this. Now these are looking nice and earthy. A good uh, melange of browns and greens. The reason I'm, if you're wondering, or a bit bamboozled by this random terrain stream in the middle of the week, I mostly want to... Well, this... I will be wanting to get this little casual project done for a while, but... Uh, the minis I'll be finishing up soonish. These, hopefully, these trees will be a nice background for them in the photos I take. All right. To make myself a bit more space here. <sighs> How's this? 
glove removal ASMR. Okay, well, let's just get these out of the way. And let's sort out these plants here. So those are the same. These are the same. And these are the same. And then we got the one big one. So, I mean, these... Hmm. Right now it's looking like these, uh... These two plants go... Like, look well together. And then these two. But I could, in theory, mix, like, everything. That could be... Well, it might be better to... I can mix everything. Like, I can mix up the separate bases, but in terms of what I glue together on the bases. Um, let's... We'll build a couple of just the small bases using just these, and we'll see, see how that feels. So I'll move the larger conglomerate bases out of the way. Let's just start with two for now. And uh, we're just, we're literally just uh, like gonna cut these stems with some clippers. And then they look like thick enough that the largest bit on the pin vise should make an appropriately sized hole. Okay, I'm grabbing clippers and the pin vise. Hello, A-E-O-W. And Richard, there are no, no ashtrays in the backlog currently. But uh, if you've watched some of my videos, you probably know I do like the ashtray design. Here's my Games Workshop pin vise. I wouldn't recommend buying the Games Workshop pin vise, but uh, I have it, so. I got this back in, all the way back in 2014, I believe, and that was when I worked at a hobby store, so I didn't pay full price for it. Okay, well, I'll clip out some of these first of all. Okay, say rest in peace or F's in the chat for this IKEA plant or we're starting the mutilation. And the bit should be big enough. Okay, well let's let's just cut out a few. And see how many looks appropriate for a base. Probably like one, probably like four or five stems per base. Yeah, and I'm starting to think this might look best with like three types on here, but we'll see. So one, two, three. Some of these are curved. How does four look? I think five is a good number. I think I'm, I'm feeling like I do want to add a bit more variety, so I'll cut an extra tall stem from this, and that can be like the one in the middle. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have like leftover, or like these plants are gonna 
there's going to be a decent amount of stimmage left on them afterwards. Well, if with that being the case, let's just do let's do six, six stems. What the, what the heck? Why not? Let's do another one of these ones though. All right, now it's drilling time. Hopefully, this doesn't become too tedious. Hopefully the squeaking noise from the pin vise isn't too grating. Oh yeah, there, there's actual holes on the base I could be drilling through. I'll do that instead. Well, let's see how it just dry fits in there. Well, I think that'll work well enough. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, how many? Let's drill one, two, three, four, five, six holes. Let's just start off with that. And we'll use as many of the actual holes on the base for the kind of like pre. Or the, I guess they're for the pegs on the feet of the minis. So we already got five kind of guidelines, but. Do want them to be a bit more equally spread out. And of course it is supposed to look like a natural, some naturally occurring plant, so a little bit of heterogene heterogeneity will look good. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one more hole. Let's put it over here. Yesterday, I on my day off, I got to rewatch the one of the best animated films of all time, Red Line. Watch it usually once a year it's like i don't know how many times you need it to happen for it to become a annual tradition but last year i watched it in january as well so it's well on its way to becoming a a new year tradition not quite fitting in the hole there okay Some of these holes you need to just make sure they're nice and big. Been using lots of super glue this week. Alright, let's glue on one of these broader leafed boys. I think I need to make this stem a little skinnier though for it to fit. Which we can just mangle like that because it's not really going to be visible. I'm pretty happy with how my really janky terrain collection is is shaping out because we got the we got the Mega Bloks dragons DIY terrain, and now I got this DIY IKEA houseplant terrain. It'll be quite the charming setup. Hobby knife could be better to trim these down, perhaps. Also, with the bent ones, I gotta figure out what's the best way to place them, probably. I don't have to worry too much about them getting, like, 
or being like s sticking out to the sides too much because like they're already on separate bases so if it's if they're getting in the way of moving your minis around you just pick up the base that's why you have the like the forest template those like foam sheets first it's like that gives you the footprint of the actual terrain on the table for like the actual rules of the game And the bases on it are just the representations of the foliage. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good with the three different types of plants on there. Alright, let's let that start drying. Well, put these up to the side and I'll only clip them if I need them because maybe when all is said and done, I'll still have like lots of, I'll still have a couple de decorative fake plants that I can use as decorative fake plants in the apartment. So I'll just fully clip this. Same with this. One of my wargaming icks is when the forest battlefield terrain templates have trees that are glued down onto them. Did I clip something from this already? I think so. Right, fully clip this one. have a lot of bases to glue so I feel like it should take me up to a sufficient two hours of streaming and probably it will use a decent amount of these plants and for now I'll just clip like six try and get some taller ones and uh, we got some multi branched ones I don't know if those will those might be a bit much to glue on is one big piece. This for this uh project is as fun as I was hoping it would be. It's like I feel like I'm a gardener pruning plants, but at the same time I'm also a crafter. And it's like pre painted terrain. Uh, technically not really okay let's see one of those two of those three of those and one of these one two three four five six Hopefully I don't accidentally drill my finger at all in this stream. One hole. Two holes. Three holes. Four holes. Five holes. 
Maybe we... Do we dare put seven holes on this one? I don't think so. You started an 08th MS team for Gamma Wolves. That's cool. Yeah, this terrain would definitely be... I mean, I would use it on a gaming table that was 8th MS team themed. There's some scenes that definitely take place in forests. What, uh, what's your 8th MS? Are you making, like, the Federation characters? Uh, your Gamma Wolves team? So uh, thanks for coming, Sean. I had yesterday off, but uh, in case you missed the stream I did on Sunday, I'm gonna my approach to streaming for 2024 is gonna be more casual, but with more streams. So uh, it's not gonna be like everyday streaming, but. Ideally, it'll be close to every day. Oh, nice. The Xeon and the Fed team, and then you just, you just have a exciting narrative scenario ready to go there. Have a friend over. Give them one of the teams to play, roll some dice, relive the anime. Let's take a look at the one I, the first one I did, uh, first me too. So this is the first one of these completed. I'd say my, the vision in my head is working out as intended. Grab one of the templates. So yeah. Just like that. But uh, we got lots of gluing to do now. But we're, we're only 50 minutes into the stream. Yes, exactly. More chill vibes to stream to. Are you, are you saying that? that you could use more vibes to stream to, because I do, uh, I'm experimenting with not having the background music in my streams. For the, I could, while I figure out some stuff behind the scenes, I thought I'd do, I, I still want to stream, but I haven't figured out my music for this year yet. But I'm like, well, let's stream without the music and see who says anything. So far, like, only one person in a previous stream noticed or said anything about it. I don't think it makes a huge difference. <clears throat> kind of seems like when it comes to, when it comes to like regular YouTube videos, there's a lot of people that don't use music at all or like only have music in like a quick jingle for the intro. But then when it comes to streams, it seems like more common that there would be like some kind of background music. <clears throat> but still, not everybody.
Uh, maybe this one I'll probably try putting seven plants on. Let's do that. Oh yeah, putting your own turn to match your beautiful voice. That's good to know. That was like one thought that did cross my mind as I was like deciding to try the experiment of not having streams. I'm like, well, I mean, like if people want to listen to music while, <laughs> while watching my streams, then <clears throat> not having um, music in the stream could be a potential benefit because then like they can just play their own music and not have it clash with any music I have going in mind. <clears throat> yeah, perspective change. I mean, there'll still be, there'll still be some times where I like stop streaming for a week or two to get a video done. I don't know if the pressure on myself has changed at all. More just like, I mean, the the pressure has gone away in some areas, but been added in more different areas. Like buying groceries, am I right? Yeah, probably after this one, I'll do one of the larger bases. So my super glue bottle is probably going to be super clogged and crusty at the end of this session. That feel when... There's one hobby advice video I watched once where they recommended never buying like these bottles of super glue and just buying the like single use like crazy glue ones from the dollar store. And their rationale was like, well, whenever you're like, like the clog, the tip always gets clogged anyways. So you just, when you're having a, a session where you need some super glue, just open one of the like one time use bottles and then toss it when you're done. And I get what they're saying, and I, I did buy some of those, that type of glue from the dollar store afterwards, but I don't think that works for me. Sometimes I just need, like, a quick little squirt of glue and nothing else. And it's not that much of a pain to, like, declog these. Sometimes you just gotta cut a bit more of the tip off. There's all, maybe only, like, one or two times in my life where a super glue bottle, like, had to be thrown away with a bunch of glue in it still because it was like so or because I like the actual threaded part of the cap was like shut and could not be opened most of the time I've been able to like fully use a bottle of super glue till it's empty Foley just having a little bit of a hard time standing up straight on this one. I'm just relying on the stems to kind of support each other. It's because the, the bearing thickness of the stems at the bottom means some of them like fit in tighter when you glue them in. You can kind of see how they're like spreading out further than than I'd like them. This is like very imprecise modeling work though. It's it's uh it's nice and low stakes. Terrain is usually low stakes, that's why it's nice to have a terrain project every now and then. All right, let's do one of the bigger ones now. Where did I put? There. I just used this sponge to dab off the excess super glue around the nozzles sometimes. You know, so I don't have to wipe it away with my fingers. Alright, so this part here, we got the slot, which will provide easy gluing. I 
And I wonder, let's go with, uh, probably need like 12 drill holes on these larger ones. Actually not 12 because we do have that slot there. Uh, Hopefully I wasn't saving these round bases for a specific size Warhammer project. Oh dear, I'm getting a phone call. Guess I'll answer that real quick. That was probably just some spam caller. Did the thing where I answer and then they hang up immediately. So it's like, okay, great. Now I'm probably going to get more spam calls. I shouldn't have even answered it. Oh, well. I think the first time that's happened. I guess I can preemptively block that number. Not that it'll, not that that'll <laughs> stop the issue. I need to remember to drink some water. So we got one, two, three, four, five drilled holes. Definitely need more than that. Do at least three more holes. It's gonna be a lot of plastic dust on the, or plastic drill bit shavings on the mat after this. It's fine, I can go outside and shake it out now because it's no longer minus 40 degrees Celsius outside. Because that's what it was like over the weekend where I am. Historic frigid temperatures. Anyone else go through a wicked polar vortex this week? Okay. Well, maybe we could put another hole on the end there. And I feel like that could possibly be enough holes. Do 
we got minus the slot. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, huh? 12, just like I said. Okay, well, let's see. The ones with the thicker stems will glue better into the slot. We'll just stick two in there. And obviously, slot won't really be noticeable with the finished project. Because there's going to be all the foliage in the way. And generally with terrain, it's very forgiving because people are more looking at the models surrounding, or the models placed around the terrain and not paying too much attention to the terrain itself. As nice as these trees are, the minis are a bit more exciting. Maybe I'm I'm enjoying this activity to an extra degree because it's very like wintry outside, and there's not there's barely any green in sight. Just a bit of pine needles, perhaps in a dark forest green. And here I am making some fantasy rainforest or something. Bit of escapism there. Okay, there might be a few holes I drilled on here that I don't end up using, actually, because it's getting pretty dense already. It's pretty dense, people. Oh, that hole isn't quite big enough for the stem. I think that means I need to clip it. So I could probably move the camera a little closer. Get a slightly better look. I was worried this terrain was going to look too janky, but I'm actually pretty pleased with how it's turning out. Not going to lie. Oh yeah, this is probably good with two, two more. Do these two. This will be easier if I recognize when the stems need to be clipped a bit smaller before I start slopping glue all over the place. Slorping glue, or what? I don't know what the proper. Or the, the best term there would be. 
it's not sloshing. Uh, I could have clipped this even. Or so, oh, we we accidentally pulled up one there. Okay, let's uh, grab some of that excess glue, get that in there. It's funny how I was saying I need a clip before I put the glue on, and I immediately did not do that. I guess I, I did, but I didn't clip enough. No biggie. Okay, we got one of the big ones done. And I ended up not using three of those holes, actually, so nine or ten is a more appropriate amount of holes to drill on those big ones. Do need to be clipping some more, though. So I guess we are we are gonna use up all of the small ones at the very least. Which was the plan at the beginning, so no issues there. So yeah, the uh, the underrated hobby supply store of twenty twenty three is IKEA people. Pretty sure every stream I've done over the last week, I've sung the praise of the IKEA Dift Decorative Rocks pack. Highly recommend. broken one hour on the stream so how the progress is looking right now maybe it'll be closer to a 90 minute stream rather than a two hour stream we'll see if i'm gonna be doing near daily streams i'm only gonna uh encourage myself to shoot for 90 minute streams minimum as opposed to the usual two hours but i feel like a lot of the time i'll end up making it to two hours anyways Yeah, I feel like this large plant here is going to end up at the end with, like, it's still going to kind of look like a, like it could be used as a decorative house plant, but, I mean, I got real alive house plants, so I don't know if I actually want to use this decoratively. I can't really give it away because it's got a bunch of, like, clipped stems. I suppose I could save it to maybe make more terrain with some time in the future. I'll have to, at the end of the stream when everything is glued in, I'll have to lay everything out on the actual mats and see how the distribution is. Maybe I'll want to make some more bases. I don't want to paint anymore, though. It's kind of done that stage and I've moved on. Yeah, let's clip like three or four more. Are you saying I got hella stamina for being able to do a 90 minute stream? I feel like I got hella stamina if I can make it to like three hours on a stream, which happens fairly often. Those are more, that's more for like the painting streams. 
I don't think I've made it, done a four hour stream yet. I'll get there one day. I don't feel particularly like inspired to try and do a, like a subathon level stream or anything like that. Subathons aren't really a thing with YouTube live streaming. Okay, let's clip two more. One, two. This base had a hole in it, just, it was just a scrap base that was in the drawer. I don't remember where this hole came from, but that's obviously too big to glue a, glue foliage into. So I'm gonna have to drill some tiny holes around it to put plants around it so it kind of covers up that hole, because that's one that might be a bit more noticeable. At the end of the day, not really an issue if it is noticeable though, because it's just terrain. Just some old scrappy terrain. After this project's done, my gaming table still missing like a couple things. Well, after this terrain's done, I feel like very properly set up for any fantasy or sci-fi battlefield on a 4x4 mat, which I have. But if I want to do, quote-unquote, tournament games of Conquest slash, you know, a game like The Old World or 40k, which, don't play 40k The Old World, but those you, it's uh, ideal to have a 6x4 table, but I don't have a 6x4 mat, so eventually I'll need to get one of those, and also another folding table. So I have two two by four folding tables. So I just need to, I need to make sure the hardware store still sells that exact kind of table. And then I can just add a third one to the mix and then I can have a six by four set up at home. But I haven't really needed it. I mean I don't really need it now because I when I the only six by four mat needing game that I play is Conquest and I play that at the game store where there are already tables and mats. <coughs> be nice to have my own setup at home eventually though it's not like when I do get that I'll stop going to the gaming store that will definitely not happen Went and saw Godzilla minus one the other week. Recommend checking it out if you're looking for a chill January movie to see. I did uh, think I enjoy Shin Godzilla more in, in terms of modern Godzilla movies. But Godzilla minus one was still pretty fun. Well made. Had a choice between going to see that and Boy and the Heron. Which is a bit of a hard choice to make. But I figured Boy and the Heron would probably stay in theaters longer than Godzilla Minus One. <coughs> Excuse me. How many holes are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do at least three more then.
what other media there's a lot of media i'm excited for in 2024 obviously <coughs> dune 2 electric boogaloo also known as tune that's coming out in like just over a month or a month and a half We also got The Boys Season 4. Pretty stoked for that. I believe we got the live-action Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender. I'll probably check that out. Because it looks like it'll be actually good. Which is crazy. Yeah, there's a, a spy family anime film coming out that hopefully will be like have a couple screenings in my North American city. Me and Blue Prappa, we binged uh, uh, the Spy Family episodes that are out currently towards the end of the year. She had read the manga previously and has like, been caught up for a while. But uh, I enjoyed that series more than I thought I would. It's there's some pretty funny shenanigans. It's very anime, though. If you don't like anime tropes, you probably won't like Spy Family. The setup is just a genius formula for shenanigans, though. For those of you who don't know, it's, uh, it's set in, like, it's, uh, the setting is, like, kind of, like, 60s Cold War, like, East and West Berlin. So the main character is a spy. Who has to infiltrate a private school's like social club so he has to adopt uh, a child to be his fake daughter to like enroll in the school because you know to be part of the school's social club you have, your kids have to attend the school and uh, the child he ends up adopting can read minds but he doesn't know that so his child knows that he's a spy but he doesn't know that she knows and then because it's like set in the 60s he needs to also get a fake wife so that the uh no one gets suspicious at the school because anything suspicious you're at risk of getting reported to the secret police and the the lady <clears throat> he ends up finding to be his fake wife is secretly an assassin <laughs> But he doesn't know that. And she doesn't know that he's a spy. But their fake daughter knows that she's an assassin and he's a spy. And then, of course, eventually... In the, like, first bit of the show, they get a dog. And the dog just happens to be able to see the future. It has precognition. But, uh... The dog can't speak English, so... The daughter can read the dog's mind, who can read the future. And the parents are just totally clueless about all this. They just think she's like a weird kid who just like says some uncanny stuff sometimes. And they're like, well, it's like she can read my mind. And there's my brief elevator pitch for Spy Family, I suppose. Check it out for wholesome animation agons. There are some, but with the, you know, the fake wife being an assassin and the guy, fake husband being a spy, there are some fun animated sequences too. Uh, which one do I want to put in the middle? Hmm. Ooh, starting to get Get a nice aroma of super glue fumes in the room now. I 
guess I could crack the window a bit, but it's cold. It's still cold winter time outside, but it's not negative 40, so I can actually consider opening the window. Buddy Daddies? I haven't heard of that one. Give me your elevator pitch for Buddy Daddies. If you, if you can. Also glad you think Spy Family's a great show. Still need like two or three on this. I probably should have clipped this one a bit skinnier before gluing it on. Oh no, it worked. It's fine. Okay, let's add one more of these. I think that'll. Oh wait, we got we got a bit of a void to fill over here actually. Is there a short a short boy perhaps? Or let's let's go with this really tall one actually. And then we'll put a short one on the hole closer to the rim. Yeah. Let's do this one. Okay, one more. All right, how many bases do we got left here? We got two big one or two big conglomerate bases and three small ones. So, we might actually be using up most of the plant here. I think I need to spend a quick minute just sorting. So that we don't end up with some at the end that are too homogenous looking. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I made the right call, just like making every base a mix of all the plants. I'm actually very pleased with how this project turned out. thought it was gonna look jankier but now I'm, I'm looking forward to playing a game with these and explaining to people that it's ikea fake ikea plants with just a little bit of glue and glue paint <clears throat> glue paint and foam i guess bases too very uh low effort project though that gets you some pretty satisfying results okay so we're pretty low on the broad leaves here <clears throat> so i'm wondering if i should just allocate those yeah so they'll, they'll be 
like two sets of bases that don't have the broad leaf plant, which is fine. Just like gonna divvy up some of these now so I don't have to think too much about it when we're actually drilling the holes. Two hitmen adopt a kid and learn to be better through raising her. That sounds like some pretty uh, wholesome shenanigans there. these two go back to a small base for a bit got to remember to take pictures of these after too i usually or when it comes to like casual terrain projects like this all the time i don't I don't put the same amount of effort into taking the pictures of these than I do with actual models because these are like mostly just going to be in the backgrounds of the photos and models I take. You know, when I'm not doing it on the usual black stage. I should ask, I'll ask Blue Parappa if she's heard of Buddy Daddies, it sounds like. Might be up her alley. Okay, we got three holes. How many did I do on these before? One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I have managed not to uh, stab my finger with the sp with the pin vice, hopefully I didn't jinx it <clears throat> by saying that. Might be good with just five holes. Let's just go with a five holer. When back earlier when I was talking about my gaming mat situation, I forgot to mention another piece of terrain I might make like far down the line is some kind of river template because alternative to buying a 6x4 mat, which are pretty expensive, like over 100 Canadian dollars, or if you're buying the like nice like neoprene mat type. I could combine my two, uh, my, the two, I have two six by four mats and they're like, um, one is like a brown kind of blasted battlefield and then the other one's more just like green generic. And so I could, you know, line them up in a way overlapping slightly so that they make a six by four surface and then I could make some sort of river template 
that can go over the the part where the two places connect and if i model it to be like to look like some sort of like dirty evil corrupted river then uh the theory is that that would look okay also give like add some water features to the battlefield make the terrain density a bit better but uh with the amount of effort that I'll take to make the river, it'll be a more that'll be a more high effort terrain project than these fake IKEA plants here. So it might be better to just save a bit of time and drop the cash on a six by four mat. I could get something that isn't brown or green, so that I have more of a variety to choose from. Or perhaps so maybe I would sell the brown. No, I don't know if I would sell the. Maybe I would sell my green. Eh, no, I don't know if I want to sell that one because it was given to me. I want to sell one of the mats to trade it for a 6x4 one because I don't know if I need three mats. Alright, this one we got to drill even less holes because we already got two slots to work with. Yeah, it looks like the largest of these fake plants will have, will still have many uh, clippings available from it. No idea what I'm going to do with that plant. It's got like, I did most of the clipping from the middle of it, so maybe it can like display it and like put some plushy or figure to just like rest in it. Or who knows, maybe a gunpla. Something that isn't painted. Yeah, water effects on bases can look pretty cool. I've done, like, I did, I used white glue on a base once to fill a gap, actually, but then I ended up, like, putting a lot of extra on there so that I could paint it up to look like a lava flow, and it worked out pretty well. And there's another one I, with a project I kind of started and abandoned a long time ago because I dropped it on the floor and it exploded. And that was one where I did the same kind of thing with white glue. To make like a really wet looking base and I was going to paint it up to look like kind of green sludge sewer water types type stuff. Yeah I haven't done anything that uses like the clear resin or like what scene land uh, woodland scenics water t water texture stuff. But when you do see that on a base it's it looks pretty cool because you don't see it too often. Wet looking bases in general, I should say. Uh, let's do one hole, another hole, and then third one. What's annoying about this pin vise is that, like, as you're, you know, doing the drilling with it, this part, like, comes unscrewed. It's not a great design. Maybe I'm using it improperly, but... I mean, I've still used this a lot over the years. And I've just dealt with the whole it unscrews itself part. I think we'll be fine with just the one last hole here. Yeah, I was thinking of those beach themed bases too, where they get the sand like and the water effect on there. And like managed to make it look like the wat like the the waves are like moving back and forth is pretty sweet. Any kind of army that has like an like 
out of the ordinary basing scheme that's like done consistently across the whole army that's like that's a recipe for an impressive army right there well we're past the 90 minute mark Plants give me a bit of a hard time. Stay there. No, stay. Use those trees or prop them against each other to support themselves. Yeah, perhaps I should have been a bit more conservative with the leafiest of the plants earlier because I'm wishing I had a couple more, a couple more clippings of that one in particular. Los Loctite brush on super glue. Don't think I know that brand. Does that super glue like have a slower drying time or something? <clears throat> This is looking like it needs an extra hole, actually. How about that? Might have to drill another one of them. Let's do this guy. Uh, so, yeah, it does sound like it has a bit of a slower drying time there. Yeah, this is looking like almost dense enough, but also like I could use one more hole. And I got some foliage to spare, so... Come on, get in there. All right, I think that's sufficient. 
Now we just got three left. And I'll probably go a bit heavier on the holes with these last three just to make sure I use up everything. And yeah, I'll probably be wrapping this stream up right around the two hour mark if I, if I take a guess. Just like usual. And the next stream tomorrow evening, we should be back to mini painting. So getting decently close on a batch of 100 kingdoms that I got to finish up before recording a quick casual Patreon vlog. You got, now we get another chance to glue on all these nice leafy ones that I had set aside. Beauty. Maybe I drilled one too many holes on here. I don't know if we need that one in the very middle. Yeah, not really. When people tell when people online tell me to go touch grass, is this what they mean? Can't believe I just thought of that joke now. It's obvious. All right, let's just glue one more of these. Let's grab this tall boy. Come on, get in there. Second to last one. Don't worry, at the end of the stream, I'll arrange them all on the mats, and we'll just end on a nice, dense foliage layout.
and hopefully the shade of green in the paint I used to match it or doesn't look too off on the green mat that I have. The green grass mat I have, I think the, the, it's definitely a more of a brighter yellow or green than this, but hopefully they just complement each other instead of clash. Should be enough holes. This leafy one right next to that. Come on. Uh, hello, Iron Elemental. Good evening to you. Oh, I'm glad that you, uh, you had also thought of a project like this. Well, I'm, I've got one more base to glue after this, so you'll get a, you'll get a good look at what the finished result is soon enough. And then maybe you can head over to Ikea yourself. You're in Europe, I believe, so there's bound to be an Ikea near, if I had to take a guess. I'm pretty sure you're not in Sweden, but still. Obviously, you don't need to be in Sweden to have likely access to an Ikea. I sure don't live in Sweden. Well, we could... Let's, let's glue one more on here. What the heck? Or right, let's put it... Whoops. Yeah, we'll put it over here. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes, pick up some house plants for terrain, and uh, the pack of diffed rocks that I won't stop plugging. Come on, Ikea, sponsor me already. That's a YouTube sponsorship I haven't seen before, an Ikea sponsorship. They would, they would, like, they're the a big enough company they're more in like the mr beast sponsorship territory okay last one we are gonna have just a few leftover scraps <laughs> Ah, and this one also has two slots already, so less gluing is needed.
Oh, another movie I'm excited for this year. Back to the topic I was talking about, like, probably 15 minutes ago, is the prequel spinoff to Mad Max Fury Road called Furiosa. I'm pretty hyped for that. Alright, just three more holes on this. For a while, my collection of wargaming terrain felt quite inadequate when it come, came to fantasy stuff because I the sci-fi stuff I was mostly sorted with a, a handful of infinity buildings but I just felt like I didn't have enough fantasy stuff but last year I finally got around to doing something with my old Mega Bloks dragon stuff and now with this these plants I just made I feel like I have an adequate amount of fantasy terrain now or stuff that could pass as fantasy terrain. I suppose that this foliage could be for either. Uh, here I go, clipping after putting the glue on. Like a fool. Hey, doth thou need more glue? Ah. There we go. suppose the lack of like tree trunk t in this uh tree trunks looking things in this terrain gives it more of like a you know swamp or rainforest or it could be a few things actually This is why we do the test fits. Oh jeez, this one's giving me a hard time. Let's just put let's just put you in a different hole there. You just don't want to go in that slot at all. That's better. Okay, well, let's, we gotta use up the rest of, so we definitely wanna use those two. Probably these two. Let's 
bit too much glue. Whoop. Oh no, my mat that is already crusty with a bunch of super glue is gonna get more crusty. Alright, this should be the last one. You know what? Let's put one more into the slot here. What the heck? That'll look right proper dense. That one just needs a bit of a reinforcement of glue. Okay, I just got to clean up these scraps, and then I can show off the finished forests. Does that weird bendy plant plastic take glue decently? I mean, it takes it all right. I'm, it's super glue, so I don't think this would be going too well if I was using plastic glue. Love to see uh, after I like play uh, some games with this terrain and like there's lots of picking up and moving around of the plants. Love to see how they hold up. Maybe I'll have to go in from the bottom and like reinforce the gluing. Okay, well, first of all, let's get some F's in the chat for these murdered fake ikea plants we still have this large one has plenty of clippings remaining and a bunch of extra so i don't know i guess let's, i'll just or i'll just insert these back in and maybe it can re continue functioning as a uh, as a plant may i can put it on the shelf in the background behind me some decor yeah it honestly like putting these back in I'm, it kind of just looks like it's intact still yeah, I'll, just, I'll just put this on the shelf behind me right now next to domo or in, in front of domo can't really see it with how dim it is Uh, that's not the same as polycaps. It's, it's a bit firmer and snappier than polycaps, I'd say. I don't, now that you've asked me that, I'm realizing I don't know exactly how to describe the feel of, like, you know, it feels like a fake plant. It's like a particular plastic feel to it. I don't know how to describe it other than that. It's not, to, it doesn't feel like polycap material, though. Definitely, I'd say it takes glue better than polycaps. Oh, we just had a guy fall out. I don't know why this one is having such a hard time. Okay, I'm just going to move these out of the way so I can sweep up all this plastic gunk from the drilling. Oh, we're just past two hours, so my prediction was correct. I'm gonna have to do a whole with all the facing I did in the last stream and this terrain. I'm gonna have to do do a bit of a sweep of the room. I had the air purifier running, but that that won't catch all the microplastics. Oh. 
Okay, let's grab those templates. Of various shapes. I can make the camera a little higher, too. If you missed me explain it earlier in the stream, these are like old, just foam... What do you call them? Foam sheets from the craft store. That I glued and taped <gasps> together to make them a bit bigger so these will be the templates for the actual terrain on the battlefield and then if you're not familiar with wargaming terrain it's ideal to have you know the trees and stuff on movable bases so if you want to move your units to actually go into the forest you can just move the trees out of the way it's just it's a lot easier in terms of the game mechanics and, uh, yeah, this is looking like some pretty dank foliage, if I do say so myself. I'd say this is more than adequate for wargaming terrain. Let's just figure out what the ideal distribution is here. Yeah, I'd say that's enough. Can play around with a lot of different formations here. Obviously, not every battlefield setup would use uh, all four templates. Depends on how much you want, what size battlefield you're on. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Iron, um, Iron Elemental. All right. Well, that basically concludes today's streams. If you have any last chat, super chats, or just regular messages you want to send, or Kofi donations, now's your chance. And the next stream should be tomorrow evening. If I have all my ducks in a row, I should be posting that stream tomorrow morning. And we'll be back to some sort of painting, I believe. So thank you very much to everyone who came to this chill Tuesday afternoon stream. A squeak out of a Swedish meatball next time. That's quite the project there. I don't know even I don't even know how I'd start to approach that. Is it like an edible squig? Or like a, a a model, like a plastic model that just looks like a meatball. You'll have to let me know in the next the next stream uh so yeah i'm going to log off now thanks again for coming everyone and i will see you for the next stream goodbye <laughs>